In this video, I will be explaining what are the benefits of event-driven architecture. I will be doing this by explaining some of the problems with request-driven architecture and how event-driven architecture solves these problems. And I will be doing this by going through the following example where we have a website, an online shop, uh, which, for collecting customers' payments, it uses Stripe, the payment processing platform. It has a payment page within the checkout process. We have a checkout service, which the website calls when a customer is ready to check out, before the Stripe payment page is shown. It also exposes a public API, which Stripe will call when it's taken payment or payment has failed. And we have an order fulfillment service, which needs to be triggered after Stripe has successfully taken payment. And first, this service will be triggered using point-to-point -point requests from the checkout service. This service updates the customer account, triggers processing of the order, and notifies the customer by email that the order has been successful. When the customer is ready to check out, the website will call the checkout service before showing the customer the payment page because first we need to generate and store a identifier which we will send to Stripe, which we will use later once payment has been taken. So after we have generated and stored that ID, we will now call Stripe to generate the checkout session and we will pass in that identifier which we created. And Stripe will return with its checkout session ID, which we will return to the website and show the customer the payment page. So now the customer fills in the form with their payment details. And we call Stripe to complete the payment, passing in the Stripe checkout session ID, which we got from Stripe. And then once Stripe has taken payment, it will use a webhook to notify the checkout service that payment was successful. And now the checkout service will now request the order fulfillment service via point-to-point -point, uh, communication to fulfill the order and notify the customer. And once the service has completed fulfilling the order, the checkout service will notify Stripe that, is a, that it has handled the request and Stripe will notify the customer. But what happens if the fulfillment service encounters an error or it's unavailable and you start to have errors bubbling upstream to the checkout service, which is handed in the webhook from Stripe, leading to your system not being able to process the order correctly, which could mean that the customer's account information may not reflect what has happened, leading to an increase in support requests, customer dissatisfaction, and an impact on the brand. But with that in mind, how can you make your system more resilient? And this is where we can utilize event-driven architecture and use event notifications. And now we are going to introduce, in this example, a machine platform, an event bus, where the checkout service will publish meshes to when it receives the event from Stripe. And as you can see, it publishes, and once the message has been published successfully, the webhook handler, the checkout service, would then respond back to Stripe that it successfully handled the event and Stripe would go back to the customer and redirect them. Now the fulfillment service would be subscribing to the events and once an event exists, it would then consume and process that event. As you can see it goes through, it does the same again, emails the customer. Now the checkout service and the fulfillment service are now decoupled from each other, which now means that the checkout service no longer needs to wait for the fulfillment service to complete and respond back, as the fulfillment service is now handled asynchronously. And what if the fulfillment service is not running or encounters an error? Well, the checkout service would not be affected, and it would still respond to Stripe that it has successfully handled the event. And when the fulfillment service resumes, it will process the events which are waiting. So as you can see, by changing the triggering of the order fulfillment service to be from request driven, point to point, to event driven, this decouples and make the two services independent from each other. 
and this loose coupling and independence introduces the following benefits. An increase in fault tolerance and time independence for processing because now the checkout service no longer waits for the fulfillment of the order and the fulfillment service can process events when it's ready and the increase in service independence can have additional benefits in development where individuals and teams can develop, deploy and release services without depending on other services to be available. Testing can be done in isolation because you have clear boundaries of the responsibility of each service. The services are triggered by meshes. They process the message and they publish the outcome. Another benefit is extendability because now you have the events, everything which needs to know about an event can, without developers having to change publishers to notify each service. Also, a publisher does not care if one or a hundred consumers are listening for the events, nor would it affect performance of the publisher because a publisher only needs to publish one message. So event notifications enables the ability to plug in and swap out services independently and this allows you to architect an incremental evolutionary guided architecture and the key word is guided. For example you could release functionality which publishes state changes for objects one month and then the next month release functionality to start consuming those events and perform actions on them. Now before I wrap up this video, if you are finding this video to be educational, then please smash that like button. So we have discussed that event driven architecture brings loose coupling, which brings fault isolation and fault tolerance. Independence and extensibility by decoupling services with events. But what does this enable and what benefits does this bring to an organisation? Well, this is quite hard to explain because it can enable solutions to problems which weren't possible before. For example, you can break apart monolithic services into smaller services like microservices or like cell based architecture into functions to enable quicker development and scalable development. You can replace entire systems without having to touch other systems. You can plug on new business processes in a fraction of the time it would have cost without event driven architecture. You can take advantage of concepts and patterns like event streaming where you can process data in real time. This has enabled better fall detection and the ability for companies to react to trends and opportunities in seconds if not milliseconds. Now. I could go on for hours describing the benefits, but I will now wrap up this video. Thank you for watching and for your time. And please, if you have found this video to be educational and insightful, then please smash that like button. And if you want to understand more about developing and architecting event driven systems and other types of systems, then please click that subscribe button to be notified when I drop videos. And please check out my last video where I described what were the differences in event driven architecture regarding commands and events. Okay, thank you and goodbye.